So let me take you through this 2018 American College of Gastroenterology guidelines and then you will understand how alcoholic hepatitis lab picture differs from the viral hepatitis lab picture. Okay. So the first component required for the diagnosis is rapid development of or worsening of pre-existing jaundice. As I have already told you, majority of the patients have long-standing history of alcohol consumption. So they may be cirrhotic already. So they may be jaundiced already. Right. So if they are already having chronic liver disease, if there is acute sudden worsening of the jaundice that satisfies the criteria or if they don't have the jaundice pre-existing then rapid development of jaundice and when I say jaundice that means the serum bilirubin level should be more than 3 milligrams per deciliter okay then comes the question of AST and ALT elevation here is what we need to particularly pay attention when you look at AST and ALT elevation in alcoholic hepatitis it is elevated so definitely more than 1.5 times the upper limit of normal that is bare minimum required according to the diagnostic criteria but majority of them have a relatively significant increase but the values are usually not in the range we see in acute viral hepatitis or ischemic hepatitis so that is something we should keep in mind AST and ALT are usually elevated more than 1.5 times the upper limit of normal but they are usually less than 400 units per liter both AST and ALT should be less than 400 if they are more than 400, then it starts falling in the territory of viral hepatitis or ischemic hepatitis and that becomes a confounding factor rather than a supportive feature. Right? That is one important point. The second thing is to look at the AST by ALT ratio, what we call as d ratis ratio. Right? We call this as d ratis ratio, AST by ALT. Now, one important point to note here is in patients with the alcoholic hepatitis, usually AST by ALT ratio is more than 1.5. In fact, when you see patients, mostly it will be 3 plus. Majority of the cases, it is 3 plus. In fact, they have asked MCQ also, in which of the following condition, AST by ALT ratio is usually more than 3 plus. That is uh, alcoholic hepatitis. Right? The reason for alcoholic hepatitis and even the alcoholic liver disease. The reason for that, the main reason for that is, the AST is a mitochondrial enzyme. And so remember about that. It is a mitochondrial enzyme and the ALT is a cytosolic enzyme. It is present in the cytoplasm. Now, alcohol is a predominant mitochondrial toxin. Right? So, whatever alcoholic metabolites are there, they injure the mitochondria more significantly than the other components in the cell. So, because of that, AST is relatively more elevated. Right? That is one reason. The second reason is AST is not liver specific. AST is expressed by muscle tissue, RBCs and various other tissues. So, alcohol can cause injury to the mitochondria in those tissues also, particularly muscles and RBCs. From there also, AST may be leaking out. That explains why AST is relatively more elevated. Then comes another point. ALT is not as profoundly elevated. ALT is relatively liver specific. It is only expressed in liver. But it is not grossly elevated uh, in comparison to AST because it is dependent on an enzyme called pyridoxal phosphate. It is dependent on the pyridoxal phosphate. That supply is reduced in patients with the chronic alcoholism or alcohol consumed, alcoholic patients because of the malnutrition. Right? So generally alcoholic continue to consume alcohol and compromise on calories and nutrition. Right? So they, they are dependent on the empty calories that are coming from alcohol. So this lack of pyridoxal phosphate also suppresses a significant elevation in the ALT. That gives rise to this ratio of AST by ALT more than 1.5. And as I have told you, remember more than 3 is more typical of alcohol induced liver injury. Okay. Then comes the next criteria that is documentation of heavy alcohol consumption until 8 weeks prior to symptom onset. That doesn't mean like a patient has continued consumption as of now, you don't diagnose it as alcoholic hepatitis. But if at all patient is in abstinence, which is a very common story. The common story because once they develop alcoholic hepatitis, right? This is a this is an illness which often makes them quite feel sick, and uh, the illness might restrict them from drinking. Not that they are motivated to stop drinking, but illness itself may stop them from drinking. They may become confined to bed, uh, and and uh, access to alcohol may be may not be re readily available. So that abstinence, if it is more than eight weeks from the uh, onset of symptoms and abstinence, then that is not responsible. I mean that that alcohol ex exposure eight weeks ago. Is not responsible for patient developing symptoms today right so that is a point if the patient is in abstinence for more than eight weeks before the onset of uh, symptoms then that that should explain other possible causes for the for alcoholic hepatitis I mean, other possible causes for hepatitis so you will not be considering alcoholic hepatitis in that case so in in simple words the history of exposure should be 
alcohol consumption should be at least eight weeks uh, prior to the onset of symptoms. If longer than that, then you should be looking for alternative explanation. Okay. Then comes the last point, equally important, that is to exclude other possible causes. What are the other possible causes we are talking about? We are talking about acute hepatitis. So, acute viral hepatitis is an important cause. So you have to do a, a entire battery of the viral hepatitis markers, which are known to present as an acute hepatitis. Then comes also the important question about taking a proper history to do, rule out the drug induced liver injury. Patient should not be on any drugs which are known to cause liver injury in preceding 30 days. Preceding 30 days uh, from the onset of symptoms. Right. So, this is the diagnostic criteria. So, when a patient presents with acute viral hepatitis like picture, he has history of binge drinking, he is a chronic alcoholic and he has presented with the jaundice and febrile illness, you will be suspecting acute viral hepatitis and if he meets these diagnostic criteria, you can say clinical diagnosis of clinical diagnosis of alcoholic hepatitis is established. Now, in the 2019 American Association for Study of Liver Diseases uh, guidance statements, they believe or they mention that we should be also following 2016 consensus guidelines for diagnosis. So, according to that, the, di the diagnosis of alcoholic liver disease is made into three tires, three tires of the confidence. The one is definitive alcoholic hepatitis where it is clinically diagnosed and histopathologically supported. Right? So, whatever the diagnostic criteria I mentioned, the very similar kind of diagnostic criteria were used in the 2016 consensus statement. So, if the clinical diagnosis of alcoholic hepatitis is established, and you have done the liver biopsy, which is not considered routinely required, right? If you have done the liver biopsy, then you will call it as definitive alcoholic hepatitis. If liver biopsy was not possible or if it is not done, if it is considered not required, you have clinically established diagnosis and there are no confounding factors. What are the confounding factors? Whatever closely related differential diagnosis we are considering or whatever the pointers which go against the diagnosis of alcoholic hepatitis. If they are present, clinical diagnostic criteria are met, but confounding factors are present, then we call it as probable alcoholic hepatitis right so definitive means histology plus clinically proven probable means you have the clinical diagnosis plus no confounding factors what are those confounding factors i'll tell you in a bit right? and you will call it as possible alcoholic hepatitis when the clinical diagnosis is established but there are confounding factors present okay so what are those confounding factors Possible ischemic hepatitis, for example, these, these uh, chronic uh, liver disease patients, right? they are prone to develop the upper GI bleed that might cause some, some degree of uh, hypovolemia, hypotension and ischemia to the liver that can cause ischemic hepatitis or a patient had a frank episode of hypotension or there is history of use of cocaine which is a vasoconstrictor right? or if there is uh, existing metabolic disease which are also considered as a risk factor for ischemic hepatitis. Ischemic presence of ischemic hepatitis or having other metabolic diseases like Wilson's disease or alpha 1 92 percent deficiency, those are considered as confounding factors. Similarly, if there is possibility of drug induced liver disease, like patient has taken some drug which is known to cause liver injury within 30 days of the onset of symptoms, then both are possible, right? Alcoholics are vulnerable for drug induced liver injury, alcohol itself is, is making them vulnerable for alcoholic hepatitis. So, both are a possibility, then that becomes a confounding factor. Then comes uncertain alcohol use assessment, right? Now, exposure to alcohol is a paramount. Uh, important uh, criteria for the diagnosis. So, be it the ACG guidelines which says that at least within 8 weeks there should be exposure to alcohol at longer than 8 weeks abstinence should not be there. Similarly, uh, the 2016 consensus statement says that there should be ongoing alcohol exposure. So, if there is no clear cut history of alcohol exposure or patient denies that he has been exposing, al uh, he has been consuming alcohol. In that case, that becomes a confounding factor. So, clinically, you are considering it based on the AST, ALT and whatever parameters we spoke. But patient denies alcohol consumption and you don't have anything to prove that he was consuming alcohol. Then that becomes a confounding factor. Then coming to the last one, that is presence of atypical laboratory tests. Now, AST levels should be elevated more than one and a half times the normal. ALT level should be elevated more than one and a half times the normal. AST by ALT ratio is supposed to be more than 1.5 times the, uh, more than 1.5. The ratio should be more than 1.5. And the AST and ALT level should be less than 400. This is the bare minimum. Right? But if, if these parameters are outside this range, like for example, uh, AST or ALT is more than 400 or the ratio is AST ALT ratio is less than 1.5. Those are all considered as confounding factors. So, if you have a clinically confirmed diagnosis, but have confounding factors, then you call it as possible AH. 
Okay. Now, before we move on, just a quick recap of the clinical diagnosis criteria from this 2016 consensus statement. Okay. So, that says onset of jaundice within prior 8 weeks. That is basically to, to say that it is an acute hepatitis. Right. Then ongoing consumption of alcohol. More than 40 grams per day for female or more than 60 grams per day for male for more than 6 months. Right. And abstinence here it is mentioned as less than 60 days. So, in the ACG criteria it was 8 weeks. Right. So, just remember that there should be a temporal relation between the alcohol consumption and symptom onset. A long a patient in long abstinence then uh, the acute hepatitis should be explained by alternative diagnosis. Okay. Then the rest of the things are same. AST uh, and ALT elevated, AST, ALT ratio more than 1.5, both values less than 400 and serum bilirubin more than. Mm -hmm.